Hi everybody, I'm Dana Scheider and today's lesson is called Don't Cross Multiply. I'm making this video because elementary school teachers love to push cross multiplication as a way of dividing fractions and for some reason this is a catchphrase that students remember and remember and remember. If you remember nothing else from elementary school arithmetic, you probably remember cross multiply. And that's unfortunate because cross multiplying is usually not what you need to be doing. So in order to understand this video, you'll need to know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide fractions to a basic level. So if you were perfect at this, you wouldn't need this video, but you need to have been exposed to it, at, you know, to some degree already. It's also helpful if you know basic algebra, but not at all required. So if you don't know basic algebra, just skip those examples because they'll probably confuse you needlessly. So there's one time when you should cross multiply. You need to cross multiply, well you don't need to, but you can cross multiply when you're dividing fractions. There is no other time when you ever cross multiply. Dividing fractions only. Here's an example of some times when you should not cross multiply. You shouldn't cross multiply when you're solving algebraic equations multiplying like fractions, multiplying unlike fractions, adding and subtracting like fractions, adding and subtracting unlike fractions. Basically, you should not cross multiply any time you're doing anything except dividing fractions. If you're not dividing fractions, don't cross multiply. It's that simple. Here are some examples of when you might cross multiply. Notice that these all involve dividing fractions. And if it seems like I'm hammering that point into your head, it's because I am. If there's one thing you want to, I want you to take away from this video, it's that you should only be cross-multiplying if you're dividing fractions. So in the first example, you can cross-multiply 1 times 5, and for the denominator, 6 times 2, and that'll get your answer. For the second one, you'll again cross-multiply 2 by 9 and 3 by 7 to get 18 21sts. And for the third one, 15 times 13 in the numerator and 16 times 11 in the denominator will get you your answer, which is 195 176. Um, believe it or not, that actually is in its reduced form, by the way. So all of these examples involve unlike fractions, but it's actually the same if you're dividing like fractions. So if you were dividing two-thirds by one-third, you'd follow this exact same procedure. Now here are some non-examples of cross-multiplication, and you'll notice there are a lot of them, and there are a lot of them for a reason. The reason is that cross-multiplying is rarely what you need to be doing when you're dealing with fractions. So our first example here is one-sixth times two-fifths. Notice that here we're not dividing fractions, we're multiplying them. So the procedure for multiplying fractions, multiplying fractions is super easy. All you have to do is numerator times the numerator over the denominator times the denominator. So in this case, that'll get you 2 over 30, which you can reduce to 1 15th. Next example, 2 thirds plus 7 ninths. Again, you're not dividing here, you're adding. So what you have to do to add is you have to find a common denominator. This should not be news to you, by the way. If this, if this is news to you, then you need to review fractions or you're going to be in big trouble very soon. So you need to find a common denominator. In this case, thirds can be turned into ninths. So turn it into six ninths plus seven ninths, then just add the numerators, and that gets you 13 ninths, which is your answer. Third example, 5 sixths minus 1 third. We're not dividing again, we're subtracting. So instead of cross multiplying, we need to once again find a common denominator. In this case, that's going to be sixths. And we'll subtract 5 sixths, or sorry, we'll subtract 2 sixths from 5 sixths. And that gets you 3 sixths, which is the same as 1 half. Now here's an example with algebra. So if you don't know algebra, 
just ignore this. It will probably confuse you, and that's unfortunate because you don't need to be confused. You don't need to know algebra to understand this. So here we're solving an equation for x. And so what we're going to have to do here is isolate the variable x to find the answer. So first we're going to multiply this by 3. So we're going to multiply both sides by 3 to get 2x equals 15 sixths. Then we're going to divide both sides by 2 to get that x by itself and that gets us the answer x equals 15 twelfths which can be reduced to x equals 5 fourths. Second example, 4 over x equals 1 fifth. Again, this is an algebraic equation. You can't cross multiply because there's no division involved and you're not actually doing an operation on the fractions. This is not 4 over x plus 1 fifth or 4 over x minus 1 fifth. This is 4 over x equals 1 fifth. So we have to, again, isolate the x on one side of the equation. So we're going to multiply both sides by x here to get rid of that in the denominator. And that'll get us 4 equals x over 5. So to isolate the x, we can, again, multiply both sides by 5. And that gets us x equals 20. So there's a better way to divide fractions, too. If if you want my advice, I suggest that you purge cross multiplication from your vocabulary permanently and just divide by multiplying by a reciprocal. And I'm going to give some examples here. So we're going to go back to the examples that we used for when you can cross multiply and I'm going to show you how to do those without cross multiplying. The first example was 1 sixth divided by 2 fifths. So instead of cross multiplying, we can just take 1 sixth times the reciprocal of 2 fifths. So 1 sixth times 5 halves, and that's equal to 5 twelfths, which you'll notice is the same answer as we got when we cross multiplied. So the second one is 2 thirds divided by 7 ninths. So we can again multiply that by the reciprocal of 7 ninths and get 2 thirds times 9 sevenths, which will get you 18 twenty-firsts, which I just realized is not actually reduced, but that's okay. Um, the third example is 15 sixteenths divided by 11 thirteenths. Again, we can multiply 15 sixteenths by 13 elevenths, which is the reciprocal of 11 thirteenths, to get 195 176 so just to conclude this is a really simple video you only need to cross multiply when you're dividing fractions you can also divide fractions by multiplying the first term by the reciprocal of the second term and your life will be easier if you use that approach and forget the catchphrase cross multiply since it is often leading you down the wrong, wrong path I hope you found this video helpful I encourage you to and to ask any questions in the comments, visit my blog at danatutorsmath.blogspot.com for more videos and resources, and subscribe to my channel if you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching.